This happened when I was much younger. I was around 12 years old or so. I remember that when I was growing up, we had a house that had a really big backyard. It was so large that there were several acres of dense woods beyond our little open area. We would often have all kinds of wild animals pass through the backyard, but by far the kind that we would see the most was deer. I would also go out into the backyard all the time because I was a pretty active kid and I enjoyed being in the outdoors. I didn't go very far into the woods much, however, though, because it was so dense and large. It would be easy to get lost and we didn't have actual paths back there. So one evening, I was out in the backyard waiting to be called in for dinner. The sun was almost setting and I remember hearing a noise on the edge of the woods. I looked over and saw a deer standing there. We made eye contact after a moment. The deer stared at me for several seconds before finally turning and moving back farther into the woods. I wanted to see where it was going so I followed the deer a little bit. I got to the edge of the woods and saw the deer maybe fifty feet farther in. Then I noticed that there was another one. I started to walk farther and farther into the woods. I was trying to be careful not to startle the deer anymore, but they seemed to be moving farther away from me anyways. I ended up going pretty deep into the woods. The deer had completely disappeared, but I was still trying to see them. Eventually, though, I gave up and then started to head back. By now, I was pretty far out and was surrounded by trees. Plus, it was getting pretty dark outside. As I was making my way back, though, I heard another sound coming from behind me. Figuring that it was another deer, I turned around and looked. I saw a bush being moved about 30 or 40 feet away from me. I thought that it had to be an animal, but the split second I saw the bush moving, it didn't look like it. I kept watching and then saw a man come out from behind the bush and then go behind a tree. I didn't get a real good look at him, but it was enough to tell that I didn't know the man. It appeared to be some random guy and was not one of the neighbors. Nobody was supposed to be in our yard, so this was really strange. Immediately, I felt the need to go back to the house as fast as possible. But for some reason, I just stood there and kept looking directly at the guy. I think I was just in disbelief. So after a moment or two, the man came out from behind the tree. He was looking right at me, and then he started to walk in my direction. I turned and started sprinting back for the house. I ran probably as fast as I ever ran before. I did not bother to look back and see where the man was at this point. Soon, I was luckily able to make it back to the open part of our backyard. I kept running and then made it to the house and went inside. I locked the door and then quickly found my parents. I told them about the guy, and we then looked out of all the windows. The man was nowhere in sight. He must have stayed in the woods. My dad then went outside to look around, and even went a short ways into the woods, he came back and said that he didn't hear anything, and he even called out asking if anybody was there. He also didn't see the man and said that the guy must have left, probably realizing that he shouldn't be here. I felt much better knowing that I was safe and inside. The rest of the night was fine, and I went to bed around the time that I usually did. However, before I fell asleep, I was lying in my bed, and I had my window open a crack to get some cool air inside. I heard the wind and the sound of crickets, but then I heard another sound. It was somebody walking out in the yard pretty close to my window. I looked over and at first saw nothing, but then a man came into view, the same man who I had seen in the woods earlier. He started walking right up to my window. Somehow, I had the awareness to quickly run over and shut the window and lock in. The man literally walked right in front of my face on the other side and looked at me. It was a terrifying moment, but I'm so glad that I closed the window. Then I bolted out of the room. Luckily, my parents were still awake and in the living room. I told them about the guy. They came into my bedroom, but the man was gone by then. Once more, my dad went outside into the yard, except this time we called the police as well. They came out and did a search of the property, but couldn't cover the entire woods because it was pretty large. The man was able to get away. I slept with my lights on and windows covered for weeks, but luckily the man never came back and I never saw him again. Thinking about that experience still gives me the creeps. I'm really glad that I was able to close my window on time though. 
I used to go hiking here and there. I went one time about a year ago on this trail that went into the middle of the woods. The area that I live in is a little out in the country, and there's a lot of good places to hike. So I was at this one hiking trail, and this was my first time at this one in particular. I started on the trail and things were fine. There seemed to be nobody else there at all. The trail was very long, but I say that because when I arrived, there were no cars in the parking lot. And as I started hiking, I did not see or hear anybody either. I went on the trail for about 30 minutes. By that time, I had reached a part that was in the middle of really thick woods on both sides. As I was walking down the path, I remember hearing a noise ahead just inside of the woods. It was pretty far ahead, but I stopped to look. Of course, I figured that it was probably an animal of some kind. Moments later, instead of an animal though, a man appeared on the path. This man had long straight hair and a mustache. He walked out to the middle of the path and sort of faced me, but did not seem to be looking at me. Then he just stood there. I continued to stand where I was too. After the man didn't move for a few moments, I actually thought about turning around and going back. It just seemed really weird to me, but then I thought that I would just keep going and walk right past the guy. I approached the man who was still standing right in the center of the path. He started to look at me as I got closer and was just staring. When I got real close to him, I waved and said hi. The man did not say hi back to me or wave. When I reached him, I was going to go around, but he stepped in front of me. The guy asked me where I was going, and I said that I was just walking on the trail. Right after the man started talking, he seemed a little bit off, like maybe he was on drugs of some kind or something. He was acting pretty sketchy, and then he told me to follow him. I said no thanks, and I decided that I would just walk back then. I said I really had to get going, and the man said okay. So I turned around and started to walk back. The man just continued to stand in the same spot for a while. Then I heard some noises just inside the woods on the trail, and I turned around. I saw the man walking back into the woods. I was glad to be getting away from him, because he seemed very strange, and I didn't know what he was doing. So I was just going to walk back to my car in the parking lot, but a couple of minutes in, I heard a noise pretty far back behind me on the trail. I turned around and noticed that the man was now walking on the trail behind me. He was pretty far back, but I saw that he was now carrying what looked like a large stick. I tried to walk a little bit faster and kept going. As I was doing so, I did my best to ignore the man. I could sort of hear him walking a ways back so I would know if he was getting closer. About five minutes later, the man was still there walking on the trail behind me. But shortly after, I stopped hearing him. I felt better and thought that he must finally be gone. But then I heard him again a few minutes after that. He was still following me. The longer this went on, the more nervous that I became. Without really trying, I was now walking extremely fast, and it seemed like the man was keeping up with me, but he was not really getting any closer, which was good. This continued for what felt like a very long time. At last, I could see the beginning of the trail where the parking lot was. I got out my keys as I approached, and when I reached the parking lot, I looked back again. The man was still there. I quickly unlocked my car, got inside, and then locked it. As I was driving away, I looked back and I saw the man reach the parking lot. He watched me drive away, and I was really glad to be getting out of there. I ended up reporting the guy for following me and his sketchy behavior. I didn't want another hiker to encounter him. After that experience, I have not been back to that trail. I don't really know who the man was, how he got to the park, or what he was doing. It was really strange for him to follow me all that distance. This is something that happened a couple of years ago. One of my good friends is a guy named Drew. We grew up together and have been friends since we were kids. So, at the time of this story, Drew had just recently got married to his wife, Jennifer. I remember that, after they got married, they bought this house a little bit out in the country. It wasn't really that far away, maybe 20 minutes, but it was farther away from the city than I had ever lived. Same with Drew. Both of us grew up in a much more populated area. 
they wanted more space and the property has a really big yard and much of it is wooded. I remember shortly after moving there, Drew invited me out to his place to check it out. When I got there, I was very impressed. They still had to get more furniture because it was a much bigger house than the apartment they had before. The yard was especially cool though because the house was not even that close to any neighbors at all and the woods was very large. There had been paths in the woods, but they hadn't been maintained in many years. So some of the paths were okay and others were completely covered in tall grass and other plants and stuff. Drew wanted to show me the woods so we walked out there. He said his plan was to buy a couple of four-wheelers and restore the paths. Then he could drive them through the woods. It seemed cool to me, and we went out to investigate the shape of the paths and mark off some points that had to be cleared. We ended up going pretty far out. I didn't realize just how big the woods was. We had been walking for quite a while, and the paths around this point were very covered. But that's when I first noticed somebody else was out there. I just remember randomly looking over to the left, and a far distance away I saw a man walking. The man was seemingly just walking through the middle of the forest. This seemed really odd. I asked Drew if there were any neighbor's properties close by. He said no, and their property was the only one on the street with the large woods. I told him that I saw a man walking a distance away. By now, the guy was out of sight. I had only seen him for a moment before he was not in view anymore. Drew said that nobody should be out here, and this was his land and he was 100% sure of that. We walked a little ways back to try to see where the man had gone, but we had no luck. The guy was so far away, and there were so many things in between us. Drew then called out, asking if anybody was there, but got no response. We both just hoped that maybe it was a neighbor who for some reason wandered into his yard. Honestly, we had no clue, but we knew the guy wasn't supposed to be there. I thought that the guy would leave when he realized we were out in the woods though, so we continued to find the path locations and were marking them off by sticking markers in the ground. About 20 minutes later, we walked around this corner and we heard a noise behind us. We both looked back and saw the man. He crossed the path from one wooded part to another. He was probably almost 100 feet away. When we saw him, he quickly disappeared into dense woods. Drew yelled at him though, and we both started going in his direction. Drew yelled that this was private property, and the man had to leave. We got to the location on the path where the man had crossed, and we looked into the woods where he had gone. The man never replied to Drew though, and we no longer saw or heard any sign of him. He would have enough time to be a good distance away by now. Drew yelled one more thing saying that if he saw him again, he was calling the cops. After that, we continued on. Still, by this point, we were both very suspicious of seeing the man. We wrapped up and then decided to go back to Drew's house. We were probably at least a 15-minute walk from getting out of the woods. And I would say about 10 minutes later, when we were maybe 5 minutes from being out of the woods, there was another noise behind us. We looked and the man was there again. This time, he came out of the woods onto the path and was walking towards us. Drew and I both just took off running. For some reason, I just had a feeling this guy was dangerous. Clearly, he was not listening to Drew and not bothered with the threat of police. We ran all the way out of the woods and into the rest of Drew's yard. Then we went inside and Drew called the police. When the cops got out to his property, they searched a little bit of the woods. However, the man was never found. Somehow, he was able to elude the police. I went home after that and was honestly glad that I didn't live there. I kept up with Drew, and he updated me on things. He said that the man never returned, at least not that he was aware of. Drew still lives there with Jennifer, and I've been to their house several times. He was able to complete the paths for his four-wheelers in the woods. Luckily, he has not seen the man at all. We never found out who the guy was or what he was doing there in the woods. A couple of years ago, I lived in an apartment complex that was next to a large woods. Sometimes I would jog through the woods, but one day I wanted to explore it and go really deep into it. 
The woods itself went back several miles, and the farther back you got, the more dense it became. The running paths only went about a mile into the woods, but to get past it, you would have to go off of the trail. So one day, I went to the farthest location of the running trail, and then went off the path and into the woods. I walked through some trees and tall grass, and eventually got into just dense trees with dirt on the ground and some plants and branches on the ground all over the place. It was a nice woods, and I kept walking for about 15 minutes to get deeper and deeper. I was a little worried I would get lost, but I had my phone on me so I could use it for general direction. The whole time I was walking, I couldn't see much farther than 20 to 30 feet around because of how dense the woods was becoming, and either a tree or a plant would block your view of seeing very far. I was enjoying being out there because I consider myself an outdoors person, but around five minutes later, I walked around the corner of a large tree to a little opening in the woods. The opening was about 30 or 40 feet long. When I did, I saw a man standing across from the other side of the opening. I had to do a double take to make sure what I was seeing was real. It was a man holding a large stick in his hand. The man was shirtless and looked to be well over six feet tall. He was looking down at the ground, and when I stopped and listened, I heard he was muttering something, but I couldn't make out what it was. Seemed very strange. Then, the man raised his stick and slammed it against the ground. I decided I wanted to head back then. I wasn't sure if the man knew I was there or not, so I decided to wait and see if he would leave, but then he started walking directly towards the tree that I was hiding behind. After that, I heard him yell, Get out of here. I could only assume that he was talking to me. I didn't hesitate at all, and I ran back the direction I came from as fast as I could. As soon as I started running, I heard the man start to run after me. Branches hit me left and right, and I screamed at the man to leave me alone as I was running. He continued to chase me, though. After about a minute, I stopped hearing the man's footsteps behind me, but my adrenaline level was so high that I kept running. Finally, I paused to check my phone to see if the direction I was running was the right way. It was pretty close and I jogged the rest of the way back. When I got out of the woods, I was bleeding from my arms and legs from all the branches that hit me, but it's better than being caught by that man, whoever he was. I never went into that woods again.